Colored stripes move diagonally on the screen and a multicolored title appears. It says, Seven Saturdays to a more fire resistant home. There's a colored drawing of a simple beige house. A title appears on an orange screen. It says, Episode 7 Building a More Fire Resilient Community. Alicia Mason appears on screen. She's a young woman with shoulder length tightly curled tawny hair and blue eyes. She wears a light green, long sleeved shirt and stands outdoors. As Alicia talks, three numbered bullet points appear below her on the screen. They say 1. Emergency line of communication. 2. How to work with neighbors. 3. Community emergency response teams. Alicia stands next to David Hawkes, a senior public safety specialist at PG&E. David is a middle-aged man with short gray hair, wearing a gray button-down shirt with a white PG&E logo. David and Alicia stand on the street in a quiet neighborhood and this is their location throughout the video. Welcome back to 7 Saturdays to a Fire Resistant Home. I'm your host, Alicia Mason. From creating defensible space to planning more fire resistive plants and preparing for an evacuation, this show has shown us that we can take steps to better protect ourselves against wildfire. Today is our last episode and one of our most important. We're gonna show you how to help build a fire resilient community. We'll show you how to establish an emergency line of communication with your family and friends. Then we will demonstrate some ways you can break the ice with your neighbors and come together to better protect your community. And finally, we'll talk about community emergency response teams and fire safe councils, two great ways to step up and protect each other in the event of an emergency. I'm joined as always by our expert, David Hawks, former fire chief for the Cal Fire Butte unit and current senior safety specialist at pg and &E. David, I can't believe this is our final episode in our last Saturday together. It's my pleasure to be back. Alicia, I'm so proud of the work that we've done together and with the folks at home. But being prepared isn't just about the home and property. It's also about communication. In three basic steps, you can build a fire resilient network that can support your community. You know, this all sounds incredibly important. It is, and the best and easiest place to start is with the people that you're already closest with in life. An orange screen appears with the title. Step one, establish emergency line of communication. Under the title, inside a gold yellow circle, is an icon of a cell phone. An older couple with a young woman look at a laptop computer. There's an overview of an animated map on screen. A small orange text box appears on the bottom right that says, two meeting locations. Two locations are marked out with location markers on the map. The line from the house towards location one is solid. The line to location two is dashed. There's an aerial view of a high school campus. Many students are gathered on the basketball courts. A young woman holding a baby sits at a desk, looking at her cell phone, with a laptop open in front of them. An older man uses his cell phone. An animated icon of a cell phone appears on a green screen. On the cell phone it says, American Red Cross, on top and below shows a big red circle over a map. There's a small red circle at the bottom that says, Confirm safe. A hand comes into frame and presses the small red circle. So David, I talk to my family and friends all the time. What's different about establishing an emergency line of communication? It's important to talk to your family and neighbors about emergency plans and how you will stay connected in an emergency. Here are some of the topics that you'll want to cover. Having a meeting location for your family in case of an emergency. You should have a location not only near your home, but also one outside of your community. Secondly, knowing the emergency plan at your children's school. And finally, how to stay connected during an emergency. Start a text thread that can be helpful. It's essential to have a point of contact outside of your community that family members can check in with. After I've evacuated and I'm safe and sound, is there an easy way to let everyone know I'm okay? Absolutely, Alicia. The American Red Cross app has a safe function where you can let your family know that you're okay with the push of a single button. An orange button. screen appears with the title, Step 2, How to Work with Neighbors. Under the title, Inside a Green Circle, is a drawing of two hands shaking. There's a drawing of a blue sky with clouds. A hand secures a poster on a wood pole. The poster says, join us for a community emergency planning meeting. On the poster is meeting information and who to contact. The poster has pull tabs with meeting information on the strips at the bottom for people to rip off. 
There are two senior citizens, first a woman, then a man, being helped out of vehicles. There's a wheelchair ready for the man. A nurse helps a woman down a flight of outdoor stairs in an apartment complex. A fire truck drives by a wooden sign on the edge of a forested highway. The sign has a picture of Smokey the Bear and says, Fire danger today is extreme. Okay, we've covered how to talk to friends and family about emergency plans. What about my neighbors? Good point, Alicia. It's time to branch out into your neighborhood, and you may already know some of your neighbors, but chances are you haven't established contact with all of them. Well, now's the time. If you're a bit shy or new to the area, it can be kind of intimidating to reach out to total strangers. Do you have any suggestions for how to break the ice? Connecting over emergency preparedness can actually be an easy way to establish contact. You can create a flyer with your contact information to communicate by text, email groups, or neighborhood apps. We've all felt so distanced from each other this year. I know a lot of people who are craving connections to new friends and neighbors. This communication is vital. It makes you more aware of neighbors who are seniors or may have disabilities and may need extra help leaving their homes. It can also help you identify community members who have medical training or other valuable skills that can come in handy during an emergency. Learning how to be prepared for an emergency is an effective way to keep your neighborhood ready to act when services may be overwhelmed and time is of the essence. An orange screen appears with the title, Step 3, Community Emergency Response Teams and Fire Safe Council. Under the title, Inside a Green Circle, is a cartoon drawing of a number of people. A group of diverse adults sit in a conference room having a meeting. An animation of an open laptop appears. An orange bar on the top of the screen has the URL, ready.gov slash cert. A line appears that says, cert programs in my area. Next to this is a magnifying glass icon. Okay, so I've communicated with my personal network and reached out to my neighbors. What's the third and final step towards making my community safer? Once we've firmed up communications with our family and neighbors, consider joining a local fire safe council or community emergency response team, also known as CERT. After seven Saturdays with you, David, I would love to join an organization to help spread all the tips I've learned. How do I start? You should check out ready.gov slash CERT. There, you can search for CERT programs in your area. CERT programs can train you and your neighbors on how to assist first responders during an emergency. Three animated graphic images appear with their names below them. First is Red Cross with the Red Cross icon. Next is Community Center with an icon of a building. The third one is Faith Communities with different types of buildings of worship a mosque, a church, and a temple. Look into other organizations like your local Red Cross chapter, community center, or church groups. Honestly, David, after the last year, I've been missing that feeling of connection to loved ones and community. This seems like a great way to reconnect and make sure that we're all looking out for each other. Absolutely, Alicia. Creating a more fire-resistant home, property, and community isn't just something that we do for ourselves or by ourselves. We're all in this together. Thank you so much, David, for all the great tips you've shared with us on Seven Saturdays to a Fire-Resistant Home. It's amazing to think how in just a handful of afternoons, we've done so much to make our houses and families safer. To all the folks at home, I hope you're encouraged and feel more confident about the steps you can take to make your family, home, and community more fire safe. Thank you so much for joining us. If you want to catch up on our previous episodes or learn even more amazing preparedness tips, go to safetyactioncenter.pge.com. The opening title that says, Seven Saturdays to a More Fire Resistant Home, appears once again, followed by the PG and E logo. Along the bottom of the screen it says, Learn more at safetyactioncenter.pge.com.